So for a logic error, uh, this happens when the program actually runs, but the results are wrong. So in a programming environment, you could do a program walkthrough uh, where you basically walk through your code just like a computer would. Okay, and then that is can be very helpful uh, when finding errors. So if we we're going to do that on this code here, uh, we've got a variable x and a variable text. We're setting x to zero. Uh, we're going to stay in the loop as long as x is less than or equal to the array length. And then we're adding, we're subscripting into the array, adding that into our text string. So at first glance, this probably looks fine. Let's say the array length is four. Okay, so uh, if we start at zero and we do the loop while x is less than or equal to four, what ends up happening is it'll go through five times. Okay, anytime you start at zero, you do not want less than or equal to, you just want less than. Okay, and this kind of shows you what happens. You start with zero, you go to one, two, three, four. That is a total of five times. So you get an off by one error. And then what is wrong with the code below? So it's calling display info and get info. And get info, we have a variable called hobby. They enter the name. Uh, the name is a global variable. And then they enter hobby, which is a local variable. So this is a scope issue. Uh, then we call display info. And document.write is going to be OK uh, because name is global. So for global variables, they are known in all functions. Uh, writing the hobby is a problem because hobby is defined inside the get info function. So it is a local variable. It's only known inside get info. So you cannot use it in other functions. Okay, and a program walkthrough can help you determine what the problem is. Now, in JavaScript, you also have an option of writing to the console. So if you were looking at this example and you still didn't understand why there was a problem, then it is helpful to see, well, what does the computer think that it has? Okay, what, does, what does the computer think it's storing for name and what does the computer think it's storing for hobby? And you can write to the console for that. So this is the same example. But you'll notice that we're writing to the console uh, a little text string called name, and then we're actually pulling the, the name that they keyed in. And we're doing the same thing for hobby. And when they do hobby, it should say something like undefined or uh, probably get an error on that because it's a local variable. So we do not have access to that. So here it's saying a hobby is not defined. That's exactly what I would expect because we don't have access to it. To display info, hobby does not exist. Now, console log is something we've been using for several weeks. Uh, super useful. You can write the variables, you can write text strings to the console, which you can see when you press F12. Uh, there are other methods that you can use in the console. Uh, if the council is very busy, you've been writing a lot to it, you can actually clear the council. Uh, there is a way to count and dis display a count. So if you're in a for loop, for example, and you want it to count the number of iterations, uh, you can do council.count. And I do have an example of that. So if we press F12, Okay, it's showing us different things, and then it is doing a console.count. Uh, you can also flag something as an error. 
So here we are displaying my object as an error. So if you do that, you get the little red indicating error. Okay, and the reason we got that is because we called console.error. Uh, you can also display things uh, as informational, informational message, and that's console.info. So let's take a look at that. And that's how we typically display things to the console. And console.log you've already used. Uh, console.trace uh, is used in more complicated code where you have uh, functions or methods that call additional functions and methods. So you can get kind of deep in function calls. And you can do a trace at the deepest level, and it kind of backs you out and shows you what code has been executed. Okay, so you can see here I've got a function call, and that's where I did my console.trace. And let's press F12. Okay, so it's just kind of showing you where it's beginning the trace. Uh, warn does the same thing as error. It just, the difference is it displays a warning, which is yellow instead of red. Okay, so it's got that little triangle. That's warning. You also have the option of grouping items in the console. So you can create a little console group. So you see it says console group. It's gonna give it a little heading of area calculations. We're displaying some information and then we're ending. And if I press F12, let's see. Area calculations, now that I've entered that, it's showing me width and height and total. And that's exactly what the group is supposed to do. 